Hey guys, what's going on? Joseph the Realtor here, back with another YouTube video. Um, guys, do me a favor, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so this way I can keep making more informational videos. Um, today's video is really important to me because it, it goes into extreme detail as to what you guys should do as home buyers, especially first time home buyers, before you go see the house. What your realtor should be doing before you drive and physically see the house. There's a lot to do, there's a lot of information to dig up. Um, my biggest thing is never ever just go see a house over and over. You're going to drive yourselves crazy looking at 20, 30 homes. So hopefully this video helps you guys out. And also hopefully this video helps out sellers who are about to put their house on the market. This video will kind of show you what a proper educated buyer's agent will do before taking their clients to a house. So like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you share it with a friend and let's do this. So um, for me, there, I'm going to just list off the things that I'm going to talk about. The first one is location. We'll throw that on the screen. Flood map, power lines, and if it's next to a cemetery. Um, number three is key selling points, which is really important. Um, number four is year built, which is also very, very important. Number five, the school district. We'll throw that on the screen. Uh, number six, taxes and the current assessed value. And lastly, number seven, listing history. Um, was it ever listed before blah 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 um, there's a little nugget at the end so please make sure you wait till the end watch the entire video share it because this is good information I'm gonna start with location guys obviously location is super important the location of a house is very important because I'll tell you what people like and I'll tell you what people don't like um, highest resale value I would say is on an ultra wide street tree line street as most realtors say um, corner lots are very desirable because you don't have somebody next to you on each side um, not on a double solid line what I mean by that is not a busy road not a main road um, not next to a stop sign or a light traffic light in front of your house because think about it if there's a traffic light and it turns red and somebody pulls up and they're blasting music you're gonna hear it in your house um, no t-bone intersections um, no four-way intersections obviously because you know a lot of traffic going back and forth it, it goes back to the point about the stop sign so location of a house is very, very important. Um, to take it a step further, um, I look at grading. Whenever I look at a house, um, a lot of people say, why, what does that matter? You know, uh, I had a client send me a gorgeous new construction house, but the back of the property started here and then it went downhill and then the house was here. So half the foundation was covered with grading and then there was the house and then the grading went down. Um, I will say water is the biggest, uh, uh, issue for a house and with a grading like that you got all the water hitting one of the foundation walls so no good grading is uh, very very important i like to look for nice level lots i look for a house that's sitting on a nice level lot and to take it a step further i look at like the home surrounding it and maybe even a block surrounding it as to where that grading goes the best house i would say is a nice level lot at the very top of a hill maybe even with some new york city views um so Hopefully that helps you guys as far as location. There are things in a home that make up for location, and I'm gonna dive into that when I go into um, key selling points. But for me, those are the most important things when it comes to location. All right guys, we're gonna dive into number two, which is flood map, power lines, and cemetery. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on a listing that I previously sold. This one's really cool because it kind of fits some of these. Hope everyone have it, is having an amazing day. Okay, this is a good one too, actually, because this one is under contract. So, not what is this one? So this is a house that I sold in Dumont. We're gonna go ahead and click on the realist, right? So this property is not in a flood zone. We're gonna go here to flood map. This property is not in a flood zone because of the orange. And um, I want to dive into flood a little bit deeper because a lot of times like this whole thing over here will be a flood zone and the house structure meaning the actual house is physically not in a flood zone and will not require flood insurance I still wouldn't buy it because it's in very near a flood zone and um, a lot of times flood maps get rezoned and when you rezone a flood map, your property becomes in a flood zone and then the value decreases drastically and the cost to have that house increases because now you now need flood insurance. 
Flood insurance is anywhere between a thousand and thirty-five hundred, depending on how many claims are on the house and how many times the house has been flooded. Um, you know, this is an app that I use. It's called RPR. It's really great. Um, I'm just gonna pull up any house. Here, we'll just we'll just click on any house. Oh, gotta allow this. Click on any house. Here, this is a good, this is a house. It's a weird looking house, but house nonetheless. So what I like to do is look at the street view, right? So we're going to look at the street view. Um, nice street, really quiet street. It's a two-way street, you know? This is cute. I, like, I look at the overhead view. Nice level lot, not too many trees, and it's not a flat roof, it has a pitch. And then we look at the uh, list price, listed for 384. RVM on, this isn't 100% accurate, but based off the 1491 square feet, this house is um, actually undervalued. It's probably going to go over asking. It was just listed. And um, the house has a lot of things that I like and a lot of things I don't like. For example, look at the street view. There's no garage. What they did is they turned, if you look at the surrounding homes, they turned the, gr the garage into living space, which is cool because now it's more living space, but you now have no garage. You have a driveway, but no garage. It's very silly. So that's just one thing. So garage... This house has a basement, so a basement's a plus, garage is a plus. There's no pool, but the yard is nice. It's nice and level, which is really, really good. And square footage, it's 1,491 uh, square feet. So I think a perfect starter home is probably anywhere between 1,400 and 1,800 square feet. Um, always look at the square footage. Never buy like a 1,000 square foot house unless you're coming from like a condo alternative. And um, make sure it has at least three bedrooms for a starter home. Three bedrooms. Uh, two bathrooms is if there's one and a half bathrooms, it's okay uh, as long as there's an opportunity to make that half bath a full bathroom. Or if there's a big unfinished basement, you can add a full bathroom in there. Um, number three is key selling points: square footage, basement, garage, pool, yard. Very very cool. I'm gonna dive into number four, which is year built. So here on NJMLS, let's pick another house. This is a perfect example. This one is pre-1900. Um, the year built is really, really important, guys, because every year, so for, I'll give you an example. Pre-1940s, they used a lot of different things like plaster lath for the walls, um, aluminum wiring for the electrical, 100 amp panels, which is not enough for today's standards. I would say 150, 200 is enough. Um, you know, they used Yankee gutters, which now we have soffits and gutters, oversized gutters, commercial gutters. They used uh, different types of shingles, flat shingles that last 10 years versus now they have 30 year shingles. Um, the siding, you know, they had wood siding, which you have to keep painting and maintaining. Uh, you know, homes built 1950s and onward have some vinyl siding, which is much better. Um, so siding and building materials and all that good stuff is really important and correlates with the year that the house was built. Um, this house was renovated. I sold this house, it was a two family. So it was very well kept for an older house, but it was renovated. So we saw that the, you know it was very well kept. So it's good, it's okay. Um, I wanna dive into your build a little bit further when it comes to obtaining homeowner's insurance. Guys, when you're applying for homeowner's insurance on a house that you're buying, um, the year built factors in drastically because it's more expensive to insure an older house than it is for a house built 1950s and onward because of the upkeep and the maintenance and the things that can go wrong. And it's very expensive for a pre-1900 house. I bought a three-family house in Belleville, pre-1900, and um, I gutted the whole thing, went to put insurance on it, very expensive still just because of the age of the home. So no matter how much you renovate it, if it's not if, it, if the original house is pre-1900 and you knock it down, it's new construction and it's cheaper for insurance. But if you keep it and renovate it, it's very expensive to insure that house. So just a little fun fact for you guys to know. Um, I'm going to dive into school district. School district is really important. I use, um, yeah, if you guys want to go to, this is a website that I use. Niche is a good one or greatschools.org. Uh, I have no affiliation with any of these websites, but they're all really, really good. Check the school system before you buy. Very, very important. Um, I'm not gonna dive into that too much. That's common sense. School district, very important. Um, what is even more important is taxes. Taxes is a big deal for properties in New Jersey. So 
right here, I'm gonna look at this. This taxes are 11,151, right? So we're gonna click on this T right here. And these taxes are 10,821. 2018, 2019, 2019, 2020, they're 11,151. And the taxable value is 268,000. So taxable value, along with the tax rate, combined with the sales price is how you as a buyer's agent can determine if the taxes are gonna go up after your buyer buys the property. And this is key because um, I've been across many situations where like it's a new construction and we factor in taxes and then the lender says, oh no, taxes are gonna be this. And you have to make sure your buyer actually qualifies for the house with updated taxes. It's always good to do that. Um, and then also just know if it's assessed correctly, um, you as a buyer's agent or even a buyer buying a house can call a town and say, hey, I'm purchasing this house for 500,000. The last time it was sold, it was sold for 300,000. Will the taxes go up? And they can kind of give you a rough estimate, yes or no. Sometimes won't, sometimes will, but it's worth a shot and worth trying and worth trying to figure out exactly what the taxes will be after you close. So taxes is key. Um, lastly, listing history. Listing history is really important for me. So I like to go on NGMLS, I go on history. This one hasn't been, but I'm gonna go to a listing that was, um, it was one of my listings actually. This one's really cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive into this one a little bit just so you guys know what I'm talking about more. Where did it go? 174 Belmont, here it is. So this is a house I sold, I represented the seller. I listed it for 400, it sold for 405 in 12 days. Um, taxes were 8,000, we're gonna go ahead and click on T here. It's gonna give us a lot more information. So if you guys look, 4,451 was 2018, 2019. She purchased it, it triggered a reassessment, it doubled. So I can confidently tell my clients, hey, they already reassessed these taxes after the renovation because this house is renovated, you know? So what I'll do is I'll use this app as well to look at the street view of that house, right? It's really important, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and do that. 174 Belmont. We are gonna look at the street view. This one is uh, key because it's on a double solid. I usually don't recommend this. It's next to a commercial. I don't recommend this. It's in a mixed-use multiplex zone for a residential house. I don't recommend this. The train is right there, which is actually a positive for me. Could be a negative for other people. We're going to go ahead and look at the overhead view. This is the house. Immediately, we notice that it is a flat roof. I do not like flat roofs, but this one is actually looks pretty new. It looks very maintained, and it does have a pitch to it. You can see it kind of goes down. So a pitch is important because of water runoff. Um, the, the guy behind them has a pool. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, this is just a street view and look at just a separate house, also old house that was renovated. So insurance is a little bit more, but because it's renovated, it helps a little bit. But very, very cool house. Um, so we're going to go ahead and look at the listing history of this house as well, which is right here. So this is key because this house was sold, let's take a look. This house was listed 2012 for 110, they sold it for 85,000. Let's check out these pictures. Disgusting. Old siding. See, this is pre-1900. Look at that old electrical service, 100 amps, if that. I probably was 60 before. You have plaster lath. You have uh, old hardwood floors. See that plaster lath? That's the lath. That's the plaster. And then there's wallpaper on top. Um, it looks like, you know, the radiant was leaking, the radiant heat. So just a very, very old house. They updated the panel, but the service is what's more important. So updated panels, don't be, don't be uh, surprised when you see an updated panel, but it's still a 100 amp service. This is no good, these are square Ds. I, um, service is probably 3,500, brand new service to a house, and then a panel is another $1,000. So that sold for 85,000, and then what they did was, let's go to the next, they listed it in 2015 for 330 and it actually didn't sell, it expired. It looks like they renovated the house. They did a really good job renovating the house and it didn't sell. So let's check out the history again. Didn't sell and then finally my buyer came along in 2016, the following year, listed it for 275. They bought it for 275 after 39 days on the market. Um, horrible because it was listed for 39 days and she didn't negotiate. So she probably could have got a better deal. 
um, but still a nice house nonetheless and the market drastically changes again so we're going to look at the listing history this was my listing so i listed it for four hundred thousand because i thought that's what it's worth i guess i was right she renovated it and because she had the furniture inside it showed a lot nicer and it was painted correctly and in 12 days it sold it for 405 so it's good to look at the listing history of any house especially sometimes there's a for sale by owner um, and they just don't know what they're doing and they try to sell it and it sells for less or way more than what it's worth and the deal falls apart and you could see how many times it fell apart so all this is um, actually very very important so listing history is key guys make sure you look at the listing history and then lastly the little nugget at the end is two things there's an Oprah request and a CAD report so Oprah stands for Open Public Records Act and CAD stands for Computer Aided Dispatch from the police station. So these are two things free to um, consumers and the public where you can go to the town and kind of get an idea of what's going on with domestic disputes or if the, town, the homeowner pulled any permits with an Oprah request, pulled out an oil tank, did service. If you go into a house and you see a brand new furnace with brand new electrical panels and you don't see any open permits or history of permits, you know that they did the work without permits. So um, a lot of good stuff to know, guys. Hopefully this information was helpful to you. And um, if you guys are looking to buy or sell a house, call me today. Um, like and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you share the video with friends who need to hear this information. And do not just go look at a house. Do your research before just driving to a house and wasting your time.